Good morning, everybody. I hope this video finds you well. Today, I want to talk about how formidable China is. I want to talk about how formidable China is. After reading comments on various American social media, I have the distinct impression that most Americans and maybe most people in the West think that China is sort of a glorified Iraq, meaning that it has lots of junk military and poorly armed peasants that don't have the heart in the game. And that's what happened with Saddam Hussein. He had invested a lot of money buying Russian technology, Russian older technology, and he had a large military on paper, and they all had nice uniforms, but in reality, um, the entire Iraqi army just kind of folded up because of uh, a lot of reasons. Don't be under the impression that the Iraqis were an easy pushover. They weren't. They had years of fighting Iran. But you have to keep, uh, keep understanding that there is this belief that China is not as big and formidable as it may seem, whether it's on paper or somebody says something against the narrative that most and so I've read I've read some of the comments and some of the comments are well the first comment is that uh, China has a conscript army it's conscript army so these are people whose heart isn't in the game <laughs> China has a professional army, and everybody who's not in it is automatically conscripts. You see, in China, everybody gets military training. So everybody is a conscript. <laughs> Two, that 
while China has uh, nuclear weapons and a lot of ships and a lot of stuff in numbers, the quality isn't that good because China only makes junk. Well, that's false, guys. This is blatantly false. China is peer capable in many industry or many uh, aspects of military warfare and superior in some very, very key aspects. Okay? It is superior. Uh, I, I, I remember what happened when uh, the defector from North Korea, uh, from uh, Russia flew to South Korea on the MiG-25 and every all Americans were like, see, look at the cheap-ass old-fashioned Russia electronics. But the point was, it's not that it was old-fashioned or anything. The damn plane was built as a fucking tractor. And the equipment in there was vacuum tubes, but they could burn through any countermeasures the America could throw through it. So it worked. Don't be so in, in love with technology. Okay? You can plow a field using a John Deere seven million dollar tractor ensemble or you could pick up a shovel and start doing it yourself okay both ways gets the job done another common misconception that I'm seeing in Western media is that there's going to be a war in Taiwan because China is going to invade Taiwan we're pushing China and therefore China is going to do that and I'm like Guys, Taiwan is brothers with China, okay? They're brothers. Taiwan doesn't want a war. China doesn't want a war. The only one who wants a war is you fucking Americans want a war. It's not going to happen. Name one thing that China did that Americans wanted China to do. China doesn't do what you want them to do, guys. Or are you stupid to think that China will fall for the bait? Must be stupid to fall for that bait. So you're talking about Taiwan, it's really gonna be a war between China and the United States. Just like you're talking about Ukraine, 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 it's basically a war between Russia and the United States. You all don't know about it yet because you are living in the dark like mushrooms. Another thing is people say, well, uh, you know, uh, China is just using old Russian technology. come to that conclusion. You must be either idiots or trolls because that's not the case. All right. It's just not the case. So what are you? Are you an idiot or a troll? Because that's not the case. China has homemade, home built systems that are cutting edge and do the job. And I got to explain something here a little bit about China here. China has been the underdog for a long time. They had to do better. They have to get better grades. They have to push themselves harder in endurance. They have to do all this 
to a greater extent than somebody in the West. So while the West is sitting here fat and happy, we got 6,000 nuclear bombs and we are powerful, we got 800 bases all over. <laughs> while everybody in the fucking West is thinking that, China's just gritting their teeth, taking it and pushing harder. And I see it. I see it every day. These people do not fucking play, guys. And I've said this many, many times. But I don't think you all understand how goddamn determined and resolute and fucking nasty China can be. So I want the purpose of this video is to explain just how formidable China is because you have to understand China is Genghis Khan with nuclear weapons. Look on a map. Genghis Khan came from Mongolia, took over China, and then all his forces came from China. So listen here. China today is Genghis Khan with nuclear weapons. And they do not fucking play. So we're going to go over here and talk about these issues. Okay?
most people in the West, is, I'm reading Western uh, comments on Western social media. Um, I don't know if they're trolls or high school kids or maybe older people or maybe people in the military who are full of, full of passion for the core. I don't know. First thing I want to do is I want to give you a couple of videos here just showing you what the Chinese military is like. Um, uh, when you look at the videos, pay attention to the fact that all the equipment is new, of new design, that the people are organized, and that it's not Soviet copies. They're not, they're all local. You don't see anything like them anywhere. They're not buying European weapon systems. There's nothing that the Chinese use that even resembles anything in the West. They don't resemble Russian systems. They don't resemble uh, American systems, with the exception of the, the helicopter. But the Chinese helicopter is set up differently. It, on the outside, it slightly resembles a Black Hawk, but that's about the extent of it. And ships, of course, look like a ship. But uh, don't let the rest of that fool you. Okay. And um, Chinese systems, by the way, are designed to last a long time. Where American systems are designed to be bought, they're designed to be expensive and designed to be maintained and when they break down they're designed to be replaced so the manufacturer of the system makes a lot of money chinese systems aren't like that they're designed to be like stones like a block of wood they're designed to break not to break and to be easy to repair and to last and last and last forever in fact there are these videos on uh, Doing, where a guy, he just goes over and goes to these parked, um, mothballed, basically uh, old uh, 1950s Chinese uh, tanks and Chinese trucks and everything built in the 1950s. He just goes over to them and fires them up. He puts a little gas in, a little bit of oil in them, and fires these suckers up and boom, they're running. He's driving them around. These things are built to last. Now, there's another thing. For some reason, there's this kind of idea that everybody in China, the Chinese military, use these cheap-ass SKSs and AK-47 clones that are exported to the United States. <laughs> they don't. They have a totally different weapon system in the mix. Don't look like anything that uh, is used in the West because they don't export weapon systems. China does not export weapon systems. So you haven't seen this shit. Uh, it's, um, you'll see videos. You, you can watch it in the video. I guess the point that I'm trying to say here is that preconceived notions that are rampant in the West are really pretty bad. I mean, um, I mean, when I was first exposed to Chinese uh, military and weapon systems, and this was back in the 1980s, and at that point in time, you know, China was very, very fourth world, not even third world, fourth world. And uh, I was surprised how little and out of touch the rest of the West was in regards to what's going on in China. It's just, I was just pretty astounded. And that was in the 80s. Now it's even worse. What do you guys think? You think China doesn't advance? They have all this cool stuff that's being made and they don't make weapons? What's the matter with you? Are you fucking stupid or what? Huh? So the first thing I want to do is just show you a video or two of some of, maybe even three, I don't know, I'll have to see, pick some good ones, of just some of the Chinese weapon systems. Don't worry too much about anything that's going on in here, I just want you to see Chinese aircraft, they have stealth technology, they have advanced radar systems that can um, uncloak stealth planes, they have systems that can uh, uncloak American stealth submarines, 
They've got robots with AI that detonate bombs. They got swimming shark robots. They got all kinds of cool ass stuff. And I'm sure while America's got some cool ass stuff too, um, the point is not what America has. The point is what China has. And remember, which brings me up to another point that people, people, America's got this big, massive army. Well, it's, of course it is. It's a military empire, you fucking moron. It's a military empire. Biggest in history, by the way. By far. It's the biggest military empire in history. It's not a democracy. It's an oligarchy-run military empire. It's the biggest in history. But people are saying, well, you know, well, China's got all these weapons, but it has nothing to do, you know, it's not like the United States with force projection. China is very specific how they use their military. It's not to police the world and fight in regional conflicts or CIA starts a, a conflict and America launches in and takes over a country. Uh, 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 it's nothing like that. It's designed that if you attack China, China fucking destroys you. And so uh, just we're going to start off here and look at... Um, some of uh, just an overview of some of the military systems. Okay, it's just overview right now. Just check out the the the, the uh, war machine porn. idea of some of the systems that China has. And they got lots and lots of systems. And um, <clears throat> this next section here I want to talk a little bit is you have to understand about people. I want to reiterate this again. The population of China is five times that of the United States. Five times. And everybody in China has military training. Everyone. It starts in first grade. So when some jackass says, well, China is just a nation of conscripts. Their military is conscripts. There's conscripts, which are just some farmers with some pitchforks that are given rifles. And then there's fucking military reservists. And China is a nation of military reservists, not conscripts. Everybody learns how to fire a gun in third grade, shoot mortars in third grade, disable a tank in third grade, fire anti-aircraft missiles on fourth grade, and fifth grade for anti-tank missiles. This is reality. This is China. Um, their uh, boot camp is when they're 14 years old. So every single week, throughout elementary school and middle school is training. Discipline, marching, making beds, following orders, roll call, all that stuff is elementary school. They're honing things. You know, you've got some basic, and you'll see little kids running around, whatever. But they, they have basic uh, squad tactics. Then they have more detailed squad tactics. By the time they enter boot camp, which is mandatory for all kids in China, 14, 13, 14, 15 years old, they have this stuff down pat. They can do it in their sleep. And that's when they start doing large-scale military exercises with other groups. When I mean large-scale, all right, I don't mean a couple hundred people. I mean 10,000, 20,000 others. Big, massive maneuvers. <laughs>
and in a way it's kind of choreographed, you know? You've got people pretend being shot, people pretend taking them off to medical, it's just boom, 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 train, 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 train. And uh, so what I want to do here is I'm going to show you some of my, uh, uh, some videos showing some of this training that all kids go through, whether they're six years old in first grade or whether they're 18, old, 18 years old in high school. Everybody in China gets military training. That makes them a reservist, not a conscript. So when you when you, when I see this stuff, there's well, China's just a nation. They, their military is just conscripts. I'm like, you are a fucking idiot. That's all I can think of. You can't tell the difference between this and that. Which reminds me of another thing. Reminds me of another thing. You see, when I mention that China has hypersonic nuclear weapon missile technology people are saying well you know america has icbms and they're all hypersonic too because all missiles are hypersonic and i'm going i'm i'm literally going are you guys are americans are you all that stupid or are you just fucking trolling me because what is it you're stupid or you're trolls both of them are bad Are you proud of these kind of lack of, of answers? Are you that proud of being so idiotic? Are you a fucking moron? Because I guess you must be a fucking moron to believe that an ICBM is the same technology as a hypervelocity missile. Yeah, ICBMs enter the uh, hypersonic range for brief periods of time in a planned projected trajectory, easy to intercept. Chinese missiles go about 15 to 20 times faster than that, and they maneuver. A Chinese missile can go from Los Angeles to New York City in 30 seconds. And maneuver. Like this. Done. Uh, I, actually, I can't say it's 30 seconds. It's more like uh, uh, 2 minutes 45 seconds. But still, that's fucking fast, okay? So, this... Okay, why, why, why? Why am I being so arrogant and talking about this? because Johnny is getting ready to march off to war. Johnny's going to march off to war to fight China, Chinese territory. We're gonna fight for Taiwan. Ooh. People, you have no fucking idea what the hell you're getting into. And I'll see some trolls, they'll come on over and respond. Well, yeah, this is the most outlandish thing I've ever heard of. America's great. Oorah, oorah, America, America. Yeah. You seen New York City lately? That's America. You seen Los Angeles lately? That's America. You seen Seattle lately? That's America. That's America. Fucking jackasses. I'm trying to save your fucking lives, guys. You want to go march off and get killed? Fine with me. But I'm just giving you. You can't say that I'm not giving you the warning. Here I am. I'm giving you the warning. President Biden's going to line you up on a boat saying, we're going to ship you over to Australia and then you're going to parachute into China. Tie a parachute into Taiwan. You will never make China alive. Mark my words. But anyways, let's get back here. So what I want to do now, I want to talk a little bit about training in school. Okay? Training in school. 
and this is you're going to see some videos here I have other videos I've talked about this numerous times uh, this time I'm going to show some more just go ahead watch it see these kids do their thing okay I, I personally like it I love my little kid in kindergarten wearing the uniform and doing roll call standing up and saluting by the way they salute differently than they do here in the United States or they did when I was a uh, saluting in, uh, for the Navy was different from saluting uh, in the American Air Force and it's really different in China there's different kinds of salutes you'll see the kids do this number uh, that is a um, it's a specialized salute it's a salute you'll see that they also have uh, some closed salutes you'll see you'll see them in the videos okay don't misunderstand. You have to understand that uh, China has a hierarchy of saluting as well as a hierarchy of roles. Everybody has a role within society. That's what this is about. So check out these videos, okay? <laughs>这里没有手机中华民族伟大复兴这么重要的任务这些人能成为民族之间的力量吗任何一个演员的导向让男孩子你个别的男孩像女人一样可以理解你把整个男孩子引向像女人一样颜值气女人气这是对民族精神的极大的一个不负责任鼓励一下自己
人到底。没有少爷，在这里就没有公主，在这里只有三条规则：第一，服从；第二，完全服从；第三，绝对服从。Now, one of the things, one of the、um, things, I'm going to call it things because it's there's so much bullshit in the United States going on, is this idea that、uh, nuclear weapons don't exist. Some jokers, some bloggers, got this half-assed, up there crack ass that America didn't have any nuclear weapons that.、Uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing were just、um, were just、uh, conventional weapons, and bombed them, and then a PR campaign came after that.、Um, totally admitting the fact that, that there's been all kinds of videos and documentation showing, clearly showing nuclear weapons detonations. I have to explain to you guys. It's easier to make a nuclear bomb than it is to make a nuclear reactor for a power station. It's much easier to do from an engineering point of view. So how people get this idea that China doesn't have these, and how do you get this idea that China didn't test nuclear weapons? Of course they did. They filmed them. They tested them, and and the China.、Um, Did that with neutron bomb and put the rest of the world gave everybody heart attacks in Washington D.C. Somehow it doesn't exist. All this stuff about nuclear war doesn't exist. People, <clears throat> let me explain something here, and I, I really have to be. China doesn't is not a Christian nation. They're a pragmatic nation, and、um, if they need to use nuclear weapons, they'll use them. They don't give a rat's ass about American culture, American society, the Louvre, artworks at the Boston Metropolitan Center of Art. They don't give a rat's ass about them. They don't care if Angelina Jolie dies in a nuclear firebomb or if Brad Pitt is crushed under the weight of a building as it collapses. They don't. Care. They don't care if the Forty Niners are completely eviscerated in a nuclear holocaust, or the Pittsburgh Pirates are gone forever. They do not care. So this belief you may have that China would never use nuclear weapons is misplaced based upon your massive ignorance of the true realities of the situation. So I'm going to remind you all. Uh, China does have nuclear weapons, and just because China has stopped announcing their manufacturing of them, China stopped announcing manufacturing in the 1960s and 70s. They hadn't stopped, and China's been mass producing nuclear weapons and nuclear delivery systems for one, two, three, four, five decades now. But yet the tally count is set back. To the 1960s, it's only 300. China only has 300. It's only 300. You willing to wish, risk your life thinking that China only has 300? By the way, 300 is all it takes. Actually, to send America back to pre-Bronze Age, yeah, you only need maybe three. Conventional war will do it. Have you seen the lawlessness and the breakdown of society? America's society has broken down. People just walk in stores, carry stuff out, no fear of police, and they take their time about it now. I've got tons of videos about this stuff. It's disturbing to me. Poor guy, you know, he's just working part time, making minimum wage. Some asshole black guy kid comes on in there, says, "Hey, man, 
give me all your money. He says, okay, I'm on the floor, take the money, and then the black kid goes, bam, and kills him. It's a breakdown of society. It should not happen. But America has no society anymore. It's being led by, well, you see Biden. What is he, the best of America can make? Is his decision smart? Is America growing? Well, let's see, America, go ahead, put a base on the far side of the moon. I dare you. And what about that uh, retrieval of asteroid that, by, that Obama said? We're going to retrieve an asteroid. It was canceled. And nothing that NASA does doesn't get canceled. How about the Artemis? They're going to launch it. Scrapped. They're going to launch it. Scrapped. Now you hear nothing at all about it. I bet you it won't be launched this, this year. You have to wait a couple of months, if anything. Hopefully it's all going to die down and people's going to forget about it. Other news is going to take over. But that's neither here nor there. Here's some videos showing China's great pride in their nuclear weapon capabilities. Remember, they don't just use dirty nukes. America just makes an explosion. And America is concentrated on um, precision ordnance that goes down and just makes a nice little footprint. China does big, massive explosions that radiate big, massive areas that kill big, massive groups of people. China kills a lot of people. America tries to isolate and just kill just a handful. So when America runs in like Syria, it uses a lot of ordnance to blow up a lot of things. China just uses one and blows them all up at once. It's like I've said before, if America wants to kill a general, it sends up a, a drone and then uh, releases a specifically targeted uh, cruise missile or hell filing. Kills that damn general. Wow. China, they say, well, he's in that city. They wipe out the entire city. Mission accomplished. It's a difference in military tactical strategy. So if you think that you're safe because you are 15 miles out of a city in the United States, you're not safe. China is just going to obliterate the entire fucking half of the state. They want to hit that city, they'll just wipe out the half of the state. That's who you're dealing with. Check out some of these videos, guys. Where we go, why don't we to a place where only we go? Where we escape from real life. 周恩来总理批准，十六日十五时为爆炸鸣曲。Tell you something here about prison. You go in prison, you see all kinds of people. There's the crazies, there's the young punks, there's、uh, people who have a criminal life, and then there's others who are accidental criminals. There's white collar criminals, and then there's just innocents. But you know, somebody who does a long time in prison, who's seen a lot. They don't walk around with a chip on their shoulder saying, "Push me." That's reserved for the young punks, who's always looking for a fight or a scam or something. The older guys who's been around the block a couple of times, had their friends got killed, been in shootouts, now doing some hard time. They're not walking around with a chip on their shoulder. They want peace. They just want to eat meals. They'll buy you a cup of coffee, maybe、uh, have a beer with you, but they don't want to fight. But if they're if they have to fight, if they really need to fight, they will fight to kill. So China is a very peaceful nation right now, and they want to stay at peace. They do, but they're not stupid. 
and uh, they will do bad stuff if they if they're pushed. I'm telling you, they'll do bad stuff if they're pushed. You don't want to push them, right? Not a good thing to do. I tell you what. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about something that people in the West have no idea about. You know, in America, houses are um, in big suburbs. <sighs> these these uh, these uh, steel frame houses with uh, particle board and uh, dry drywall with a sheeting and that's it. And uh, you got roads meandering and lawns and it looks so nice with these McMansions. China have these huge skyscraper complexes within walls. They're all made out of concrete. So China has these concrete fortresses. Everyone is walled only one or two gates. Each gate has guards. And so China is a collection of walled fortresses. You can go on the outside and you see all these nice stores, but the stores can't get through to the inside. They're on the outside. You have to walk out of the store, go around the complex, and into the main gate to get inside the living areas. Within the living areas, you have a central park, some playgrounds, You've got your cleaning and your police janitors and all that other kind of stuff. I have a vid many videos showing what it's like on the inside of these places. But the point that I'm trying to make in this is to show you that China is a society of fortresses. So if you think you're going to just waltz on into China and remove your tanks over, you're just going to go from one fortress to another fortress to another fortress all populated by trained military people from ages 6 to 90. And they're all going to be awfully pissed. So what are you going to do? You're going to go with your squad of eight people. You're going to have some SEALs marching on in. As good as you may be, you're not going to be able to take over 50,000 screaming Chinese people that's armed to the teeth. They're going to fucking swarm you and gonna fucking gnaw at your teeth and you're gonna grab your eyes up because there are way too many of them. So when I'm thinking, of, when I see some of this nonsense that's coming, I don't listen, like, do you have any, and it, it's obvious, they have no idea how big China is, obviously no idea how far China is, and have no idea how they're gonna get there, what's gonna happen. They have no idea because they have these preconceived notions about be people being friendly. So anyways, let's go look at some of these fortresses, shall we? This is in my complex. You see, there's a wall around the entire complex. And in the wall on one side are shops, and on the inside, there's uh, no shops, just the regular houses. It's a wall. And then on the side are the buildings. See? There's the wall on the other side. All housing complexes and buildings in China's like this. Now here is a northern gate that's locked. There's usually multiple gates in these complexes, but they're all guarded with security guards. This one here, since this is a new complex, is unmanned and it opens up into another section of the complex. Then once you get on the inside, you have the social areas, the parks and everything, and then you have the various apartment complexes. This is apartment B or four, this is complex three, and we got a bunch of construction workers here parking in front. And you go through and you go up and into it. As you can see, here's another gate that goes through the wall. All housing complexes in China are surrounded by walls, just like medieval forts. And then we go into the complex. This is my particular building. And this is the front gate from the back. 
near the office and you can see how things work. Gates with guards are typical. And then when you get inside the complex, it's a park and living areas. It's just the way it works. talk about here is skills. Obviously uh, China has a lot of skilled people because in the culture you have to survive. Um, you know, mediocrity, mediocrity is not acceptable in China. You have to be the best. Many kids learn that if you're not the best you're going to be begging on the street because for the longest time China was dog-eat-dog -dog world. Well, China has a lot have changed substantially, but still, you have to be the best. You're expected to do your best. And I really like that about China. But people don't seem to understand. They seem to think, well, you know, the best and brightest of China go to the United States and they uh, get good grades. So much so that China has to subtract 30 points on their entrance exams or else the entire, uh, all the universities would be 100% Chinese. But China is a nation of merit. They have some remarkable capabilities. So um, if you think that uh, China is just a bunch of uh, gangbangers with slanted eyes, triads, you are woolly mistaken. They are a merit-driven society. And if they feel threatened, they will be lethal. And they will not show mercy. I think I better repeat that. If they feel threatened, they will be lethal and will not show mercy. So if you think that your ideology of God or religion or global warming or whatever else plays a part in the calculus, it doesn't. China will be nice and friendly up until it isn't. And then it's really night and day, it's light switch. It's light switch. And uh, anybody who's been to China can affirm that that's the case. And so, uh, I'm just telling you this straight up. This is a straight skinny, guys. So let's just check, check out a little bit of uh, some videos. I'm just showing how merit works a little bit in China. Reminding you all that these are hardworking people and they will go after you. Okay. <laughs>
my babies Life's not fair You get no say in the world you're born into You don't decide your name You don't decide where you come from You don't decide if you have a place to call home Or if your whole family has to leave the country Yeah, it's messed up how the world judges a person like you. You don't decide how your story begins, but you do get to decide how it ends. Yes! Okay, guys, so that was some videos and everything. So what I am trying to say here is pretty simple. I'm saying that China is a formidable force. <sighs> so guys, um, it's more than just me saying, well, China's got a strong military or anything. What I'm trying to explain here is China is the most formidable nation on the planet right now. Anybody who thinks that they can waltz on over and engage China, fight on Chinese soil, prod China into an action, are delusional. China's calling the shots right now today. And if you are under the impression that it isn't that way, you can go ahead and believe all you want. Because if you want to know something, I can tell you what your future is. You're going to die, probably horribly. China is mighty fucking formidable and powerful. It is this big, nasty dragon that's all dressed up in a cute little panda bear outfit. But if they get angry, or if they see that they have to put on their dragon face, they will do so, and there will not be many survivors afterwards. Well, we'll have Japan march in and fight them. That kind of talk shows absolute ignorance on the realities of the situation. China is a fortress. China is merit-driven, and they are fighting for survival. Have you seen how the Asian people are being treated in the United States? They see it too. They know that they're fighting for survival. Putin is fighting for survival. So if you think you're just going to be able to waltz on over to China and not have consequences. you got another thing coming. Now, this is my little taste for you. I don't want to do too many war, military build-up kind of video kind of things here. I, I'm not really, you know, life is too short for this bullshit. But i got to tell you something, people. There seems to be like a lot of people in the West, especially America, that think that China can just be goaded and be another Syria, can be an Afghanistan, can be a Ukraine, can do something else. That you can pull China by the nose like you've kind of manipulated Russia. And I'm here to tell you, no. No. So when you start talking about a war with China, I'm talking back. Where are you going to be shopping in the United States when all your stores are burned down? How are you going to get gas when all your gas supplies are empty? How are you going to use your cell phone to check your social media when there's no American satellites? How are you going to drink drinking water when Lake Tahoe is completely radioactive? You need to be asking those questions. Instead of saying, what's going to happen in Taiwan? What's going to happen in Taiwan? Taiwan, 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 Taiwan. How are we going to get the chips? Getting chips isn't going to be your biggest problem, people, because you won't be able to afford anything. 
You won't have jack shit. You won't be able to afford anything. You won't have any food. The worst thing you're going to be trying to do is fight for moldy turnips. That's your reality. So stop pestering me about questions about Taiwan. You should be asking about how the fuck am I going to survive because the current American group of presidents and oligarchs are fucking nuts. And that's the fact, Jack. All right. I am tired of this. I'm literally tired of this. You don't want to hear me ranting and raving, do you? I hate ranting and raving. I think it's bullshit. I'm just here to tell you, you can't say I'm not warning you. Can't say I'm not warning you. So here it is. If you think I'm full of shit, come on over. Come on over. As in... Fearless. Come on over. You have no idea what you're getting into. And at that, people, Zaijian. Because you know what? If you do listen to me, I know you'll make it. Because I believe in you. Again, Zaijian.